this remuster. In this series, we select one transaction from among the dozens of Pentagon contracts issued over the past week and a half. We place it in context. We briefly talk about its implications regarding U.S. foreign policy, government spending, and overall militarism. Today, we're going to discuss the ways in which U.S. academia support the U.S. war industry. Please consider donating to the NewsBud fundraising drive if you find these reports informative. On May 23, 2016, the Pentagon paid Carnegie Mellon University $8.9 million for basic and applied research of unconstrained resolution, occlusion, pose, and aging tracking, surveillance and identification in support of the Special Surveillance Program. According to the contract announcement, this research will provide next generation algorithms and cutting edge fundamental research to solve the aforementioned difficult scientific problems that are typically encountered during aerial and biometric surveillance. Work will take place in Pennsylvania, Michigan, California, and West Virginia. Please check the information section below because it contains more details regarding each university and the contracts involved. So many universities support the U.S. military. Some of these universities include UC Berkeley, which works on DARPA computing. DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The University of Alabama, which works on medical research, clinical trials, missile components, and advanced technologies. Carnegie Mellon University operates the Software Engineering Institute in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It works on classified software development, including biometric tracking and surveillance. Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, helps DARPA work on electronic prosthetics and regaining senses and functions after limbs are severed and then reattached. Draper Labs was founded through the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. MIT, but now is nominally independent. It has a storied history, though, of helping DOD throughout the Cold War and after. Draper Labs today is focused on the Trident II submarine-launched ballistic missile. It also works on advanced computing, ISR, that is intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, microchip miniatures, and tiny processors for a variety of applications. The University of Dayton in Ohio works on propulsion, aerospace materials, and composites, along with propulsion and rocket design. The University of Delaware works on modular composite light metals. Georgia Tech works on research and development regarding electronic warfare, radar, rocket design, jet propulsion, cyber and information technology, IT. The University of Hawaii works within the Maui High Performance Computing Center, which contains some of the most powerful and fastest computers in the world. In this capacity, it also offers some support regarding satellite tracking as well as asteroid observation. Johns Hopkins University provides support to U.S. Special Operations Command, but beyond that, we don't know because the contracts do not obviously clarify in what capacity Johns Hopkins helps U.S. SOCOM. MIT provides, receives billions each year to operate Lincoln Laboratory. MIT also works on DARPA's Living Foundries program, which attempts to basically get organic and biological manufacturing for military purposes. Are any of these universities in your town? What can you do to address the ways in which the universities help basically unending war. New Mexico State University, home to Pistol Pete, is located next to White Sands Missile Range. There are a variety of ways in which New Mexico State University helps the Department of Defense, but its primary objective lately, as of July, tw July 27, 2015, is to support the Information Operations Vulnerability Survivability Assessment Program, IOVSA. IOVSA is basically how the Department of Defense, it's the methodology that they came up with to evaluate information technology systems. 
UPenn, the University of Pennsylvania, works on language comprehension and ways for the average soldier, sailor, airman, and marine to understand random, quote, low research, low resource languages. RAND is a think tank based in Santa Monica, California. It helps the Pentagon with long-term strategic support, studies, helps the Joint Chiefs and the Secretary of Defense to analyze where to go, what to do. Research Triangle Park is a grouping of Duke, NC State, and UNC. Research Triangle Park works on cyber, electronic, ordnance, excuse me, explosive ordnance disposal, counterinsurgency techniques, biometrics, information sharing among the Department of Defense and various agencies, as well as advanced digital low light imaging and secure tactical communications. Utah State works on ISR, that is intelligence surveillance reconnaissance, image processing, sensors, and data analysis. USC, University of Southern California, works on bringing data together and making sense of it for the Department of Defense. Many of its contracts with the DOD are opaque. They don't really tell us much about what they're doing. DARPA microprocessing is another area that the USC, that USC is involved in. The University of Washington works on submarines signals, data recording, and sonar work. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution of Cape Cod, Massachusetts has t basically partnered with the Department of Defense to work on persistent littoral underseas surveillance. Uh, it works on sonar and a variety of acoustic measuring capabilities. Work is in Woods Hole, Massachusetts, but also in Newport, Rhode Island, in Andros Island in the Bahamas, Groton, Connecticut, San Diego, California, Kings Bay, Georgia, Bangor, Washington. These are basically areas where the U.S. Uh, Pentagon, the submarine program, is located. Groton, San Diego, Kings Bay, Georgia, Bangor, Washington. These are major submarine bases. Wright State University works on how drones, otherwise known as unmanned aerial vehicles, interact with human import, imp, input and without human input. Wright State also works on ISR and how drones exploit sensors that are operating on the ground. We'll stop there for this week. We've been discussing how U.S. academia supports the U.S. war industry. I hope this has been an informative primer. If you take one thing from this briefing, please understand that billions and billions of dollars are at stake here. Corporations often are the ones profiting, but today we see that U.S. academia profits from supporting the U.S. war industry as well. Please check back regularly, and if you can, please consider contributing to the news button or Kickstarter campaign. Thank you very much. Take it easy. For more reports like this and much more, be sure to visit and subscribe to Boiling Frogs Post. Here you will find our monthly exclusive report on the Department of Defense spending from our military industrial complex watchdog, the host of the war industry muster. This exclusive report covers the military industrial complex like no one else out there. In the month of May alone, the Department of Defense spent nearly $16 billion on 237 individual contracts. Now this does not include 17 foreign military sales contracts worth nearly one and a half billion dollars. Just to give you an example of the detail in this report, as you can see here, in the month of May alone, Lockheed Martin received $331.7 million to provide Israel, Finland, Jordan, and Singapore with everything from guided multiple launch rocket systems to uh, unitary rocket pods, you name it. Just to show you how these corporations and governments are profiteering off war, one bid was solicited one bid received. Be sure to visit our Kickstarter campaign and pledge your support for NewsBud, a truly one-of-a-kind, 100% people-funded media outlet. We will receive zero financial support or any support from any corporation, foundation, or NGO, and we will be advertisement-free. This means that we are 100% no strings attached, held accountable only by you, the people, our supporters. For those of you that have pledged your support, Thank you very much. You can always increase your pledge at any time before the campaign expires. For those of you that have not 
pledged your support yet, you still have time. We're down to the last two weeks. I strongly encourage you to pledge your support today. Newsbud, where media integrity matters.